Welcome to Conversations with Body and Mind with myself, Antoinette Nirvana. Body and Mind is your health and wellness online directory. And coming up in today's conversation, we'll be chatting to Liz Cunningham. She's a heart leader, a soul mover, mentor of emotional intelligence, intuition and well-being. Wow. Good morning, Liz. How are you doing? Good morning, Nirvana. Very good. Thank you. So good to chat with you. So before we start on about your work, the incredible stuff that you have to offer, let's learn a little bit more about Liz Cunningham, your journey, the stepping stones, the things that brought you to the point of where you now say, I'm a heart leader and a soul mover. Well, it's a a long journey and I feel like I'm in the third chapter of the journey. The the first part Part was the first 20 years that I spent in corporate in IT information technology from the early 80s and the first 10 years of that was was very much in the space of sales and relationship and recognizing how critical connecting with people at a level of relationship was to being successful in that space but also in those early 80s it was very much like the wild west out there there were no rules and frameworks really in IT. It was all so new. So the ability to be able to be flexible and adapt and be creative around finding solutions and going into places that we hadn't been before, so all out of the comfort zone, was such a great learning ground for me around trusting my instincts and trusting what I sensed about what was possible. And the second part of that first 20 years, I actually started my own business. As a 30-year-old, I started my own IT company, which was such an exciting time. I mean, I really knew nothing about leadership and management and all of that, but it was dive in and make it happen. And the big thing was that I had people reporting to me. And so the journey of understanding what makes people tick and what inspires people and what enables people to show up every day in life and be able to give up their best, that was the incubator and the the learning space for a lot of my understanding and a lot of my practices that I, I have used then in the second 20 years where I stepped out of the corporate world and started offering my services and insights back into the corporate world in the space of emotional intelligence. And that was round about the time that I turned 40, where I decided that I wanted to put the soul back into business because it felt like after 20 years in the business world and having experienced the excitement and the connection and the relationships at the back end of the... 99, 2000, at the turn of the century, it just felt like business was no longer fun. It, it was just becoming more and more pressurized and stressed and yeah, people were struggling in the early 2000s and I just felt like business had lost its soul. Yeah. I came back into the, the corporate world with this idea of we want people to show up at work and give their best. We, we definitely want more than just hands and feet. We want heart, hearts and minds as well for people to be completely engaged. And that was what I've been doing for the last 18, 19 years. And initially it was the leadership that I was delivering on um, emotional intelligence in the, in the context of leadership. But as the working world and our, the climate within organizations and the financial pressures and the changes that have been happening in, in the business world, as these sort of racked up in, in intensity and, and velocity, you know, changes coming at people faster and faster, I found that the work wasn't so much about leadership. I then became very involved as, with helping people navigate change the speed of change and using the emotional guidance system as a as a compass for being able to navigate change and pressure and then ultimately now in the last mm, five six years it's really been about emotional intelligence in the context of resilience the ability to be able to to recharge regroup um, navigate the chaos You know, the answer is we can't control what's going on in our outward world and our outward relationships and not be in survival mode. 
one's ability to navigate some sort of path through the minefield. As I am approaching the third 20 years and looking at how best I can serve in this space. And so I'm feeling like I'm ready to sort of niche in a little bit and focus more specifically. And that niche for me is what I'm calling womanity. Women of my age and stage who are moving into their 55 plus moving into their third chapter, that's the one group, but also women who are juggling those priorities of business, family, career in their lives. So I'm really looking to to support women. They are having to support so many people in their world, their children, their partners, bring that to the chaos that we that surrounds us well liz we spend a little bit of your time on building up to what do you do what is being a mentor about an emotional intelligence what i'd like to say is while i'm focusing on womanity and the feminine spirit i don't want to exclude masculinity and strength and what males bring also working with who i'm calling influences people of influence people who are impacting people in their own space and that can be women or men for example i'm part of a, a collective i'm one of the heart leaders on a, a collective called eq evolution which is an online community if i can call it that and we do regular podcasts around that work about unpacking emotional intelligence for people to learn and understand more about it that when when we haven't embodied it we 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 haven't integrated our understanding and awareness of what emotional intelligence means to the relationship with ourselves. Because we tend to look at it as being a tool that enables us to have better conversations and relationships with other people. But actually, the starting point is it enables us to understand our relationship with ourselves. actually affects our overall well-being in terms of our physical health. That's the space that I'm really working in now is that inward space because resilience and well-being is really an inward emotional intelligence journey rather than the outward aspects of emotional intelligence which is all about how I relate to everybody else and how I impact people when I communicate and what's the difference I make in the world. I think we've got to go inwards at this point so that we have choice to show up in a space of openness and growth rather than showing up every day in survival and struggle. Emotional intelligence is one piece of that. What I'm finding is that movement, getting people into their bodies, and I'm a, I'm a NEO teacher, and I'm finding that the blend of movement and insight is just so incredibly powerful. But of course, movement also helps to shift energy. So when we are stuck in a, a pattern of thought and feeling, when we change the action, in other words, we change the movement and we take our bodies into a space of joy and, and pleasure and ease, it helps to actually create the space for us to see our world differently. So with a change of heart changes everything. I'm also drawing hugely on the work of the HeartMath Institute, which Bruce Lipton, HeartMath Institute, emotional intelligence near they this beautiful cocktail of inward insight that enables people to shift their inner climate to one of ease and when our cells and our physical body and our central nervous system is in a space of ease it's the opposite of fight or flight and of course that immediately then changes how the brain works and we move out of that fight or flight reptilian reflex through recognizing understanding regulating and using that emotional information we have this foundation in our being of being in a state of rest and reflect or rest and digest if you like and then 
practices that the HeartMath Institute offer and movement. And of course, there are so many modalities available for the body-mind component, but it's really finding what resonates for each individual. My tools of preference, as I say, are emotional intelligence, NIA, or movement, and HeartMath energy management techniques. The other person's work who I draw on a lot is Donna Eden. She has the most incredible tools in the space of what she calls energy medicine. Yeah, I have not listened to any of her stuff. I will definitely look that up. You can share what people can get hold of you if they want more information. If you could share that with us, please. Okay, the website is www.eqevolution.com and all my contact information is available right there. EQ Evolution also has a Facebook page and within that Facebook, Facebook page we have a group called Living Emotional Intelligence. Wonderful. Thank you very much Liz and please don't forget that you can go to the Body and Mind website which is www.bodyandmind.co.za You can also find us in the Body and Mind blog which is bodyandmindblog.co.za You also now can find us on your Android as well as Apple Play stores and that's the Body and Mind Health Directory app and all of our blogs, all of our interviews can be found on the Body and Mind app and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and then share it to those people that you think can gain benefit out of these wonderful members and conversations that we are having. Well Liz, thank you for sharing your time and your wonderful work with us. Wish you well with the work that you're doing. Thank you Nirvana. Thanks so much for interviewing me. Thank you.